So recently, I've decided to give Assassin's Creed Odyssey another chance, and I'll be honest, I'm starting to feel like previously I have judged the game a bit too harshly, because after playing it again, I'm starting to feel like it's a pretty decent game, but I still believe that it's not a good Assassin's Creed game, and I still feel like it's driven away from what an Assassin's Creed game is meant to be. But when we talk about it being a video game in general, I'm starting to think it's actually pretty decent. And whilst playing the game, I thought I would make an Assassin's Creed Odyssey video. This is another video game opinion video, and the opinion in this video is why you should side with Sparta in the Peloponnesian War. Now before anyone says, yes I am well aware that other YouTubers have made this exact video, I have certainly not been the first, and I probably won't be the last. So the Peloponnesian War had two sides, the Dalian League, which was led by Athens, and the Peloponnesian League, which was led by Sparta. And people may choose to side with either side for personal reasons. Sparta, because, spoiler alert, that is the homeland of the protagonist. Or Athens, because, another major spoiler alert, it wasn't Athens that threw you off a cliff when you were a child. And when it comes to the aesthetic choice, an argument can once again be made for both sides. For Sparta, it's no secret that they were the land of the warriors in the Greek world, whereas Athens was the homeland of the greatest minds and philosophers in not just the ancient Greek world, but the entire history of the literal world in general. But in this video, I'm not going to be talking about either of those points. Instead, we're going to have a look at the history of the Peloponnesian War to decide which side was the right side in the Peloponnesian War. And as I've already stated, I believe it is Sparta, and here's why. So before we talk about the Peloponnesian War itself, we need to have a good look at the long history that led up to it. So in 499 BC, the first Persian Empire attempted an invasion on ancient Greece. This would start a huge collection of wars known as the Greco-Persian Wars against the Persian Empire and the Greek city-states. The Greek city-states were a part of the Hellenic League, which was led primarily by Athens and Sparta. That was until 478 BC when the Spartans gave up on their leadership position. This made Athens the sole leader of the Hellenic League, which replaced it with the Dalian League. However, the Dalian League became extremely imperialistic. Athens had much direct control over other member states, and accumulated a large income from tributes from said member states, which was used to pursue solely Athens' interest rather than the Dalian League's, including greatly improving the Athenian navy. Sparta and its allies, which were known as the Peloponnesian League, started to become very suspicious of Athens as it became more powerful and had ambitions to expand its league. This caused Cold War between Sparta and Athens, which finally started to get hot during the First Peloponnesian War, which started in 460 BC, in which Athens usurped Aegina into the League and attempted to do the same with Megara. By 454 BC, due to its direct control over the member states of the Dalian League and turning said states into vassals, the Dalian League is known by this point as the Athenian Empire. Returning to the First Peloponnesian War, which ended 15 years later, in 445 BC. It ended with Megara returning to the Peloponnesian League, both Trozen and Achaea becoming independent, and Aegina remained a vassal state of Athens, but other than that maintained its autonomy. And since Sparta and Athens still held a common enemy, the Persians, they both decided on a peace treaty known as the Thirty Years' Peace. The reason it was called that was because the treaty was supposed to last 30 years before its expiration, but in reality there wasn't any real peace, as the two would continue to support their allies fight against each other in proxy wars, and despite that it was supposed to last for 30 years, the treaty only lasted 14, because the year 431 BC was the beginning of the Second Peloponnesian War. And since this is the much more significant war, 
This one is simply known as the Peloponnesian War, which was caused mainly due to tensions between Athens and Peloponnesian League member Corinth, who convinced Sparta and the other allies that Athens was a threat. This war lasted for 27 years and resulted in at least 20,000 deaths, but more accurate numbers are unknown. And in 404 BC, it ended with a Spartan victory. The Dalian League, or at this stage mostly known as the Athenian Empire, was disbanded, and the Spartans occupied Athens, its territory, and its allies. So now that we've gone over the history of the Peloponnesian War, as well as the history that led up to it, here's why Sparta would be the right side. Now, although both sides went against the Thirty Years' Peace from time to time, the violations made by Athens were much much more severe, and Sparta, despite that they also occasionally made violations, still worked to maintain peace. For example, in the year 440 BC, Samos, a city-state within the Athenian Empire, rebelled against the Athenians, and later on, many lesser revolts started springing across the Athenian Empire. The Spartans knew they could aid these rebellions as a means to indirectly fight against what they still considered an enemy, but they knew that doing this would break the peace and lead to a direct war, so they decided to not get involved. The Athenians, however, rarely showed that same respect. For example, in 433 BC, the Peloponnesian state of Corinth tried to retake its colony of Corkia which after rebelling against Corinth, became a neutral state. But before Corinth tried to retake their colony, Corcyra sought an alliance with Athens, and Athens could have turned this request down, knowing that it would cause conflict against a Peloponnesian state. But instead, they used their fleet to help defend Corcyra, which would later join the Dalian League. And again in 432 BC, just a year before the Peloponnesian War, Athens angered Corinth again. This other violation was the Battle of Potidia. Potidia was a colony of Corinth, but unlike mainland Corinth, which was a part of the Peloponnesian League, Potidia, which was largely autonomous, was a member of the Dalian League and a tributary to Athens. This was until 432 BC at this battle, in which Athens laid siege to the colony in an attempt to annex it. Corinth finally managed to convince Sparta and the other members of the Peloponnesian League that Athens was a threat and war was needed. And this was when Sparta and the Peloponnesian League finally declared war on Athens. And this is why in Odyssey, I believe you should side with Sparta. Because although it was Sparta that officially declared war, Athens was definitely the true aggressor. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it educational or useful or even just entertaining and I will see you guys in the next one. Spike.